just a quick story. Uh, this, uh, these past two weeks, I've been in school. I've been in school to uh, become a fire instructor, and uh, they do a lot of um, public speaking in there, and you had to pick a topic. He said you can pick any topic you want to present before 20 firefighters. Guess what mine was? <laughs> the gospel. It was great, man. I just, I, I had 15, 20 minutes of their <laughs> attention. They weren't allowed to run. They weren't allowed to hide. And I had a, I made a PowerPoint. It was really good, man. I just, a few guys liked it. There's a, there's a couple believers in there. And then the other guys, they respected it. And they, uh, it was good. So I was so thankful that God allowed me to do that. But, um. We, everybody needs the Lord. Everybody needs the Lord. So if you would, stand with me. We're going to go to the book of Acts. Change it up a little bit this week. The book of Acts in chapter number 20. The book of Acts chapter 20. We're going to do verses 17 through 24. Listen to what he says. He says, And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus, and called the elders of the church. And when he were come to him, he said unto, the, unto them, Ye know, from the first day that I come to Asia, after what manner I have been with you in all at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept nothing back that was profitable unto you, but have showed you, and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Say the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my, li my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish Finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And so the title of this message is A Missionary Mind. A Missionary Mind. Let's pray together. Dear Father, we come before you this morning once again to worship you, to reverence you, to bow our knee to your holiness. Knowing, God, that you are the one in control, not us. You are the one that can change lives, not us. You are the one that can give repentance and faith to a heart and change them and make them a new creature. Oh God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We thank You for His sacrifice, atoning for the sins of many souls, His blood, Lord. Thank You so much. Thank You for changing lives. Thank You for Your Holy Scriptures. May You open our eyes into the truth this morning. Draw us nigh to Your side. We love You, Lord. And thank You for all who are here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. So in our text here, this is the great Apostle Paul on his third missionary trip. He is on his way to Jerusalem, and he's trying to get there before Pentecost. But he stops at a place called Miletus. So Miletus is a city, a port city, like a lot of cities are. Why are a lot of cities port cities? So they can have access to ships. So they can have stuff coming in and coming out. But uh, Miletus is approximately 20 to 25 miles away from Ephesus. And me and my brother Charles Parton, we went to Turkey uh, maybe two years ago, and we had the opportunity to go to Ephesus. And we actually went to the stadium where Paul preached at. That was pretty cool. We preached inside of that stadium. We just said, uh, right there, I mean, the echo was just awesome. But see, Paul planted the church at Ephesus um, on a second missionary trip. And he did that, and he was making his rounds back through on his third missionary trip, and he calls for the elders. He calls for the elders of that church that he planted uh, maybe a year or two prior. He called them there that he may give them a charge. To have a preacher's conference, a, a charge to say, don't give up. Don't fall by the wayside. Don't go after false doctrine. Stick with what I've taught you. Do the things that I've taught you. Don't be uh, fooled by, uh, by false teachers. Stick with the stuff. 
So I see a lot of things in the scripture that uh, we, we read this morning. I see a lot of things. One of them is Paul's mindset. Paul's attitude, Paul's uh, resolve, Paul's unwavering message, Paul's burden. You see, he had the, the true mind of a missionary. And you know, we as Christians, those who are Christians in this room, those that are born again, I hate to tell you this, but you, have a, you, you are called to be a missionary. Well, I'm not going to some foreign land, getting support from other churches and all those things. I'm not talking about that. You're a missionary at your work. You're a missionary here in Dayton. You're a missionary at the grocery store. A, miss a missionary, as defined by the Webster's 1828, is someone that propagates a religion. One that preaches the gospel. And as a Christian, we all must be that. We all must have a missionary's mind. When? Part of the time? Half the time? A quarter? All the time. All the time, we must have a missionary's mind as Christians. So three, three different things. Uh, the right missionary mindset, the right mis missionary message, and the right missionary motive. So let's read again our text here, verses 17 through 19. Look at it. Acts chapter 20, verse 17 through 19. It says, And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus. And called the elders of the church. Elders are kind of like the spiritual leaders, the, the, the pastors of the church at Ephesus. He's calling the, to, to, ha, to come talk to them. In verse number 18, it says that when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know, from the first day that I came unto Asia, after the manner I have been with thee, uh, be, been with, with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many many tears and temptations which befell me by the laying in wait of the Jews. And so here come the elders from Ephesus to meet Paul at this other city, which is about 20, 25 miles away. These men were excited. How do I know that? Because I would be excited. Wouldn't you be excited to go see your brother, the one that planted the, the church there, the one that preached the gospel to you, the one that uh, discipled you, the one that showed you all the wonderful things of the scriptures? Wouldn't you be excited to go see him? I would. I don't know if they had horses. I don't know what they came on, but they were fast. I'm telling you. They were excited to go see Paul. And Paul said to them in verse number 18, he says, What manner I have been with you at all seasons. All seasons. That's a very important little phrase there. All season. The mindset of the missionary is consistent. Consistent. A Christian must be consistent with the gospel, consistent with their testimony in good times, in bad times, in whatever times you're going through, you must be consistent. What's going to happen if I have a house plant in a little pot and I'm not consistent in watering that? What's going to happen? It's going to, it's going to wilt. It's going to die. <laughs> I've got to be consistent with it. If I'm uh, planting a field and I have a row and I cut the row out and I'm throwing seeds and then every once in a while I just get lazy and I... Get, start daydreaming about something and I miss a big spot and then I start doing it again. What's going to happen? You want to have a big spot of, of dead space. There's nothing going to grow there. You see, as a Christian, we must be consistent, consistent with the gospel, consistent in watering, telling others about the Lord Jesus Christ. We know some plant, some water, but who gives the increase? God. God gives the increase. So we must rely on him. Paul says, I ceased not to teach and preach uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. He ceased not in doing that. Look what Paul says to Timothy. Look at uh, Timothy chapter 4. Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 2. Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse number two, he says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why did he charge in the, in the verse number one? He says, I charge you. I'm putting this on you. You must do this thing. What preach the word? Why be instant in season, out of season? Why? Because he says later on in verse number three, because the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. All seasons. 
be preaching the gospel in all season because the times will come when they will not endure this. It's going to not be easy all the time, but you must be on it all seasons, always preaching the gospel to stick with the gospel no matter what's going on. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ to tell all men. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 58, you don't have to go there, I'll just read it to you. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Always abounding. Always. No matter what's going on in your life, I just don't feel like it today. No, always abounding. Put your feelings aside. Yeah, are you going to have hard times? Absolutely. But if you're a Christian, you must always be abounding in the work of the Lord. Stick with the gospel. Stick with the fundamentals of a Christian. Well, I'm in sin. Repent of your sin and do what is right. Do what's right. Get in the Bible. I know I'm a sinner. I shouldn't be reading the Bible. We're all sinners. Repent of it and open the Bible. Read it. Well, I shouldn't go to church today. I've heard this a hundred times. I shouldn't come to church today because my life's all messed up. Well, come join us. Come on! Don't worry about that. We don't come to church because our lives are right. We come to church to get right with God. That's why we're coming here today. You come to come come walk the streets of Dayton with me sometime. That's what you're going to hear. Stick with the stuff. Win souls in all seasons. All seasons. Doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Verse number nineteen. He goes on and says this. He says. In all season, serving the Lord with all humility of mind. Now, if anybody could be puffed up, it was Paul. He could have been puffed up. His heritage, his knowledge of the scripture, he was a Pharisee. He even says that I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. You know what a Pharisee knows the, knows the law, at least they should. He could have been puffed up. Look at Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 4 through 8. Philippians chapter 3. Hopefully I got the right scripture here. Philippians 3. Yeah, here. Philippians 3, verses 4 through 8. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he have whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, though I count a loss for Christ. Verse 8. Yet doubtless I count all things but a loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. It's all about Christ, isn't it? It's all about Him. It's all about having that humility of mind. All that you have and all that you don't have, it's all of God. And He's given it to you, and you must walk in the humility of mind. It's all for His glory. Everything is for his glory. It's not his knowledge. It's not his fairness of speech. It's not uh, his looks. It ain't in uh, any, any way presents himself. It's all about the power of God. That's it. That's the, only, it. that's the only way anything ever gets done is the power of God. In Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 through 5, I'll just read it to you. I was with you in weakness and in fear. And in much trembling, Paul talking, and by my speech and my preaching was with, was with not enticing uh, uh, words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the power of the uh, demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in God. It's not about you when it comes to witnessing. It's not about you when proclaiming the gospel. It's about God. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. People say this all the time. I, I don't witness it. It's just not my personality. I just don't know the Bible that well enough. I'm shy. They say that all the time when it comes to witnessing to people, telling them about the, about the gospel. I'm shy. And they think in saying all these things, they're being humble. Oh, I'm just, I'm just too shy. Just, God just hasn't given me that gift. Therefore, I just won't do it. 
But the truth is, is you're being proud. You're being proud because you don't want that other person to know that you don't know that much about the Bible. You don't want that other person to know that you're shy. You you may not have the gift of speaking or whatever the case is. But that doesn't matter. None of that matters, man. Nothing matters. It's about humbling yourself, having the mind of God, and proclaiming the gospel. It's about Him. It's not about you. Don't you think God gave you certain gifts and He knows what He's given you? And He can use you? He can use you. He can use every one of you. Doesn't matter who you are. What? What? Did Moses have a problem? Imagine if I stuttered all the time. Could God use me if I stuttered all? I mean, you see how I read. I can hardly read sometimes. But God uses me. God can use any of us. Isn't that wonderful? It is wonderful. It's all about His glory. Humble yourself. Use what God has given you. And what else does He say in our text? He goes on and says, with many tears. With many tears. When it comes to evangelism, when it comes to loving your brothers and sisters, a key ingredient for all of us to have is many tears. Broken hearts. When your brother hurts, you hurt. When you see a precious soul, it's not just I'm going to give them this sales pitch of the gospel. It's saving them from an, an internal place of hell. With many tears. What a terrible thing it is if we as Christians have not tears for the lost. What a terrible thing it is for us to have not tears and love for one another. Look at verse 31 in our, in our uh, uh, chapter here. Chapter 20, verse number 31. Paul says, Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. He's talking about the Christians at the church at Ephesus. He's talking about uh, praying over them, telling them over and over again, please don't go after these false teachers. Don't do it. He loved them so much. Let me ask you a question about this little church in Old North Dayton. Let me ask you a question. Do you have tears? For one another. How many of us throughout the week, number one, pray for each other? I hope so. But number two, how many throughout the week maybe send a text to another member? Do you have the, no, you have the numbers of the other people that come to this church? Do you know where they live? I don't know if you do or you don't. But shouldn't we reach out? Well, that's a pastor's job. No, no, uh-uh. It's all of our jobs. To love each other. When one hurts, we all hurt. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. Look at Psalm 33. I want you to look at this. This is a very important verse, especially when it comes to the body of Christ. Psalm 33. Let's read verse number 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant is it it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Let's read that again. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's the church. That's the way it is. When there's dysfunction in the church, man, we don't get God's His work done. He doesn't bless us, but it is a blessing to dwell together in unity. To have the same mind, the same heart, the same goals, the same tears. Tears for one another. Tears for the lost. Working together for God's goal. And let me ask you this. Why do uh, Christians have not tears? Why do I not have tears like I should? Why? How come my heart doesn't break like it should? I grow cold. I don't walk with God. I get entangled in the things of this world. Why don't others have tears for, uh, for, for, for the lost people? How come they don't weep over a soul? How come they never weeped over a soul? Because maybe you haven't wept over your own soul. Maybe you're not saved. You're telling me as a Christian you've never wept over somebody's soul? It's a scary thing. 
Maybe you're not saved. You see, Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 19 and verse 41, He wept over Jerusalem. He wept over them. God, who knows all things, He wept over them. Look at Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verses 2 and 3. Romans chapter 9. Verses 2 and 3. This is a very heavy verse here. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. You know what Paul just said there? He said, I would, I would send me to hell if you would save my brothers according to the flesh. Israel, if you would save then, send me to hell. I wish myself accursed from Christ. Man, has any of us ever done something that severe? I haven't. Man, he had a missionary mind, didn't he? He put others way above himself. That is, that is amazing to me. Could anybody here utter those things? I don't think I could. I mean, I have to really be walking with God. I don't know, man, but that is just, that is burden. I have a great, when he says great heaviness, this is great heaviness. This isn't just. I have great heaviness. Let me go make some tents and whatnot. No, this is great heaviness, weeping, uh, wailing. You ever had your heart broke? You ever had your heart broke and man, all you do is you wail? I mean, you just cry. That's the way I want to be for souls, don't you? I want to have a heaviness for people. Man, I want God to change me. Revive us, oh God. Revive us. See, being obedient to God is a very good thing. Being obedient to His command to go forth and preach the gospel to every creature is a very, very good thing. But you need to have tears. It's not a routine. It's not a, that's a person. That's a soul that you're dealing with. It's a precious soul you're looking at. Hanging in the balance of hell forever or heaven forever. That's who you're dealing with. A person that's hurting. A person that's lost. That's who you're dealing with. It's good to have tears. He goes on to say in our text, in Acts chapter number 20, he says, And temptations, and temptations was befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. Now I'm not exactly sure what he means by these temptations. But I look at it and I just think that he may be saying temptations as in temptations to quit. Think about Paul. You know, we, we about quit when somebody gets a little bit angry at us when we share the gospel with us. When we share it with them. We, we think about quitting when, the, when it gets a little bit awkward when you're, when you're uh, sharing the gospel. But Paul, he, had, he was going to prison for the gospel's sake. They were lying in wait for him. They wanted him dead. He was beaten of a 40 stripes save one for the gospel's sake. I mean, the temptations for him to quit, I'm sure there were many. Don't you think? I know I would. But no matter what, in our lives with the gospel as Christians, having those gospel tracts in our back pockets, talking to people one on one, we can't quit. We can't argue with the Holy Spirit that dwells within us that says, hey, you must witness to this person. You know what I'm guilty of? I am so guilty of this. I'll be in line at a grocery store. I'll be at the bank. I'll be at wherever I am. And God will be dealing with me to witness to a person. And I'm just like, I don't want to have a long conversation. Isn't that bad? That's bad. I just want to be quick. I, need, I, got, I got so many other things to do. So I just hand him a track and run so they don't say nothing to me. See ya! Run! Go! That's wrong. I should take time. It's a precious soul. I need to have a missionary mind wherever I am at. And look what he says. Look at, uh, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 in verse number 11. This is, this is very important when you have feelings like this. This is so important. This is what Paul 
must have felt when he was thinking of quitting. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 11, the very first line, it says, And such were some of you. That is something we need to be constantly reminding ourselves. As such were some of you. As he goes through in verse number 9, it shall, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And guess what? As such were some of you. We can't forget that. That person that we're talking to, that was you. That's you. That's somebody else's grandchild. That's somebody else's child. That's somebody else's mom that you're witnessing to. But you're washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So not only as a missionary, not only as a Christian, must we have the right missionary mindset to look at people as souls, but we must have the right message. The right message is so important. Look back at our text in Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20 and verse 20 and 21. He says this, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you see the right message? It says right there, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the right message. Amen. It is not have a little Jesus and do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Carry a Bible, come to church, but just live however you want. No, it's repentance. Jesus preached, repent or you all shall likewise perish. He, they, he said, repent and believe the gospel. You must have repentance. What's repentance? It's to change your mind. God changing your mind. Repentance is not a work, but it is a gift of God. It's regenerational repentance. And as a Christian, you have a life of repentance. You have a life of following Christ. Repentance to what you want. That means you're following your way and you turn. And who do you turn to? Christ. That's who you turn to. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse number 2. Many people say, I've given my life to God. But nothing's different. I'm a Christian, but nothing's different. Well, you have not experienced being born again. You have not experienced the right message coming into your ears. It says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and verse number 10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Knowing that you have sinned against God makes you hate your sin. Makes you have a taste in your mouth from sin that you are disgusted with. You want nothing to do with it. You turn from it. That's what repentance is. Turning. And who do you turn to? Christ. That's what it says. The one who loves you. The one who died for you. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And notice what it says after the Lord Jesus Christ, Malia. Look what it says. The Lord Jesus Christ. What's that dot? What's that dot, Jordan? It's a period. It's, it's it. Done. Period. The Lord Jesus Christ. Period. Salvation is never more than the Lord Jesus Christ. Never. It's Him. Christ plus nothing. It's His atonement for your sin. It's His blood. It's Christ alone. Jesus saith unto Him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Me. That's it. It's Christ plus nothing. If you, have got, if you had worldly sorrow and say, oh man, I can't believe I've, I fell into sin again, and you turn, and you turn into the AA program, you may do good for a little while. You may be happy for a little while. You may stay off the booze for a little while, but you're not a new creature. 
You're not a new creature in, the, in Christ Jesus. When, if you have godly sorrow, you repent and you turn to the only one who can save you, and that is Jesus. He's the only one that can change you. He's the only one that can make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. That is it. Him alone. That is the right message. As it says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 12, it says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. As a missionary, you must have the right mindset. As a missionary, you must have the right message. But next, you must know who to go to. Who should you go to? Let's look at our text here in, number, in verse number 21. What does Paul say here? Testifying both to the Jews and also the Greeks. Jews and Gentiles. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You want a translation of that? Everyone. That's what that verse means. Everyone. Testifying both to Jews and Gentiles. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. That's it. It's everyone. You know, it's a, it's a sad thing that there's many churches, there's good churches that have the right message. But they just keep it to themselves. There's many Christians that have the right message, but they keep it to themselves. It's a sad thing if you go out door knocking, you know what happens a lot of time? You knock, and the, and the person comes to the door, they go, hey, are you a Jehovah Witness? That's the first thing they always ask. Isn't that sad? I bet you there's no Jehovah Witness that gets asked, hey, are you a Baptist? No. Mm -mm. Ain't happening. Baptists don't do what they're supposed to be doing. They have the right message, but they keep it inside the four walls of the church. We cannot be that way. We must go forth as Christians. There is no wrong address that you can take the Gospel to. There is no wrong place. If it's good to preach the gospel inside the four walls of the church, I'm telling you, it's good to preach the gospel under God's canopy outside. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. It's a glorious thing. It brings glory to God. It brings honor to God. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, Jesus Christ and all the apostles, you know what they were? They were street preachers. Jesus Christ and all the apostles, what does it say? Publicly. It says in our text, publicly and house to house. He taught them publicly at the synagogue where they met for many meetings. Publicly at the uh, games, the Roman games. Publicly, out in public, telling people the, the wonderful news of the gospel. It's wonderful. Why wouldn't you want to shout it? We as Christians need to have the right missionary mindset in all seasons. We got the right message. Now we've got to have the right mindset to go. And you may say, like I said before, I'm, I'm, I'm shy. I don't have that personality. Well, what should I do? Repent. If you're a Christian, repent. That's what you should do. Repent. Ask God to give you boldness. I can't do it. I know you can't. But God can. And He can use you. He can use you. This is the most wonderful, important message you can ever have and ever will have. If you can't, if you can't share it, then something's wrong. Something's wrong. Let's keep going here. Uh, last point here. The right motive. Let's look at verse 22 through 24. And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save the Holy Ghost save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth, witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. He was bound to go to Jerusalem. Bound! He couldn't break free. His burden was so strong, nothing was going to hold him back from going to Jerusalem to testify the gospel of the grace of God. It says in 2 Timothy 2.4, No man entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. 
entangleth with, with the things of this life. No man does that who's bound in the Spirit. Who's bound to go forth and preach the gospel? Who who has give, who God has given him that charge? You can't get away from it. If God has laid that on your heart, as a Christian, the Holy Spirit does lay that upon your heart. He's revealed to him in verse number twenty three that the Holy Ghost said in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. It's going to happen. You're going to get bound. You're going to have afflictions. But he's sold out, isn't he? Who wants to be like Paul here? Anybody? I want to be like the Lord Jesus Christ, but I also want to be like Paul. Paul, man, he was bound. He said in verse 24, but none of these things move me. My wife calls me stubborn. I say, hey, that's a compliment. Thank you. I am stubborn with some things. Some things I shouldn't be, but other things I'm thankful I'm stubborn. I'm going. I'm bound in the Spirit by God to go. Why? That He can finish His course with joy. What's Christian joy? What is that? To serve God. To serve Him. That's what joy is. It's not the stuff. It's not the comfort of this world. But real Christian joy comes from serving God. I can't tell you how many times I've gone door knocking, gone street preaching, done things for God, and I came back rejoicing. It's a joyous thing. It's not about the comforts of this life. Look at 2 Corinthians. I believe this is the last scripture. Let me see. 2 Corinthians chapter, six, or, uh, chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <coughs> verse 16 through 18. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses sixteen through eighteen says, For which cause we faint not, but through but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not on the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I really believe that verse in number 18 is the plague of man. It really is. It's the plague of, of the Christian. It really is. We just see things and that's what we focus on. We need, to, we need to focus on the things which are not seen. The heavenly. The things for Christ. That should be our focus. So let me ask you, what about you, Christian? Let me ask you, are you bound in the Spirit? Are you bound in the Spirit to do what God's called you to do? To preach the Gospel? And listen, not all are called to be street preachers. You're not. Not all are. But you are called to share the Gospel in your way that God's called you to do it. And that's between you and God. Are you bound in the Spirit or are you entangled in this life? As a Christian, which one are you? Are you bound in the Spirit? Does everybody know you, where you're at, at school, at work? If I go up and say, hey, what about Brother Nick Barello? Tell me about him. What would they say? Oh, he's all about this, 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 this. Or is they going to say, oh, he's a Christian. He's a Bible beater. That's a compliment. He'll pray for you. He cares for you. He'll share the gospel with you. He knows about the Bible. Is that, is that how they describe you? I hope so. It should never be all, oh, Andrew, he's just a fireman as I go to work. It should be all, oh, that's the pastor. Oh, I mean the captain on shift. You go talk to him. Christ should always be first. You should never be bound by the things of this world. Never entangled, but you should be bound by the gospel. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 10, But by the grace of God, Paul talking, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. You see, we're all given as Christians a measure of grace. And he says very clearly that that grace given unto me, God saving me, was not in vain because he labored more than they all. He went above and beyond. So do, do not let that grace of God that is in your life be in vain. Do not let it be vain. 
If you know the Scriptures, if God has saved you, don't let it be vain. Wherever you are, share the grace of God. Share it. So let me ask you one last question for everybody that's here today. Number one, if you're a Christian, you must have the right mindset. Number two, you must have the right message. Number three, you must have the right motivation. But if you don't have any of these things, it's because you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so the answer is, is repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the answer this morning. If you're sitting here and you're saying, my life's falling apart. Things aren't going right. I'm not where I want to be. I'm not where I should be. Everything is just not right in my life. Well, you know what I'm going to say to you? This may be shocking. Good. Good. If that turns your eyes to Jesus, good. He can save you where you're at. Good. I'm so thankful I was going through a miserable time and I came to the end of myself and I called upon the name of the Lord. I'm so thankful for that. At that time, I wasn't thankful going through such hardship, being alone, being, being completely just unto myself and just, just my life falling apart. But I, but I have repentance and I turned to Christ. He saved my soul. He can do the same thing for you. When? What program do I have to go through? Do I have, where's the priest? Do I need to go talk to that guy? No. You talk to your great and high priest. His ears are always open. He says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Man, I love that. Whosoever. Whosoever, Jordan. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter where you're at in your life. It doesn't matter. It's whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord to die to yourself and be so concerned with the things of this world, let me tell you, this stuff of this world doesn't mean a lick. It's going by the wayside. It's done. It's going to be gone. But the things you do for Christ are forever. That's your mindset. That's the missionary mindset. That's the Christian mindset. It's all about Christ. Everything. Every situation. So that's the most important thing you can ever ask yourself. Is am I saved? I pray you're saved this morning. And if you're saved, I pray that you're serving God. And we need to encourage each other in that.